Well, uh, thank you very much for coming. It's uh, my pleasure to get a chance to speak with my uh, new friend we just met, <laughs> uh, Cedric. Very nice, really an honor to meet you and get a chance to speak with you. And as I said in the introduction, you're a, a Fields Medal winner, which is, when, you hear, when I hear that, uh, that's uh, such an, a, a great accomplishment. Uh, as it said, kind of, it's the Nobel Prize for math, sort of, but it's the, oh, ma wow. it's the math prize. It's the highest prize. I wonder if you could, we could start with that, just so the, the audience has a, an appreciation for that. What was that like, and what was that like to you to get that type of distinction? Because that's a huge, a huge honor. What was that like? What's yes. the medal like, and what was that yes. getting it like? Definitely, it's huge honor and huge responsibility at the same time on your shoulders, because all of a sudden, you become one of the faces of the mathematics field and you will have to explain and explain it over and over to the media, to the public, etc. First, you have to understand when you get it, it's a process in several stages. Okay, there are all the discussions and debates about whether you will get it or not and you are aware of nothing of that. It's completely secret. Even the jury is secret. You don't know who is discussing about you. And one day you receive the phone call if you're lucky. Lucky means one of the four people who get it every four years. So on average one per year in the world. And you receive the phone call and that will be the president of the International Mathematical Union telling you I have good news for you and that is the formula which tells you the good news is there. And then there's a six month period during which it's secret <laughs> and you have no right to tell it to anybody. I did not even tell my parents. And oh. then six months later, there is it's part of the uh, uh, International Conference of Mathematicians. You receive it. It's a head of state that will give it to you. So in my case, it was in Hyderabad, India, and the president of India was handling it to me in front of the whole mathematical community, thousands of people gathered from all around the world, in front of hundreds of cameras from all around the world, you're on the news, etc. So there's this contrast for six months, complete secret, and you're on your own with the news, and then all of a sudden the whole world is aware. Yeah. That's, a, that's an interesting moment, I, I would imagine, because there are some things, I think very few things, but these life-changing things that happen. So that up to that phone call, it seemed like that was one part of life. And then after that phone call, after receiving the medal, I imagine it completely changed things for you. You know, after you receive the phone call, you wonder, did I re really receive the <laughs> yeah. phone call? Wasn't yeah. that a dream, etc. Yeah. But then there is the official confirmation, etc. And uh, the, the day when you receive the prize is really one of these life-changing moments. Yeah. I, uh, I know it was on 19 August uh, 2010 and uh, within a few hours, my, yeah. my life changed yeah. because uh, talking to everybody, et cetera, et cetera. It, it's one of these occasions in which you see yeah. your life taking a new turn. I had this, so when we said August 19th, that's my birthday, by the way. Uh, wow, so that's, wow, wow, that's a good wow, coincidence. Wow. But also I felt the same way when I, it's funny you mention it because when I received my phone call, you're waiting for this phone call to find out if you're going to be an astronaut. And I remember the, I knew it was coming that morning and I got on the phone and, you know, they, said I've been selected and I hung up and I didn't believe it. I called back. I actually called NASA and I go, did that's you make it? And they go, yeah, no, that was us. So that's, a, that's, exactly that's the kind of thing. I still can't believe it now. And it's a magic That's the same exactly thing. the feeling. And in yeah. your case, as in my case, we, you and I know it's not like the lottery. You yeah. prepared for years and yes, years and yes. years of hard work and it's and a whole lifetime that leads, lifetime. leads up to those events. So that's one congratulations on that, of course. And you mentioned an interesting thing. You said that it's also a responsibility. And so from that time, take us a little bit to, from what you did math with, with the Fields Medal and beyond that time, because now you've gotten into politics, which yes. is very unusual, I think, for science, uh, science math, uh, mathematicians or someone to get, to get in, but maybe that's the, what's coming down completely more often. But, but you decided to do that. Tell us about that and how that happened. Completely unusual. First, let me say that after the Fields Medal, indeed responsibilities, mm -hmm. I became a director of a science institute, I worked hard for the communication of math to broad audience, a series of lectures, DVDs, books, etc., going on television, etc. 
And, uh, but then in 2017, it became very serious when I ran for politics. It was a process that was not expected even by me and that took me by surprise at the time of the presidential election in France. We had this chaotic, complicated election with a lot of uncertainty. And the team of now President Macron and then candidate Macron approached me like, you're a well-known scientist, would you be interested in participating in the new movement and politics? Mm -hmm. And at first time I said, no, <laughs> no, that's not for me. I have so much to do for the communication of science and politics is so, so, so strange and difficult when you come from the outside. Yeah. But then they insisted and somehow the situation was becoming so much chaotic that I believed I had to do something strong in favor of what I believe in particular the European uh, ideal that was at the core of the program of, uh, of uh, President Macron. You know, if you ask me, how did you get into math? I could not name a precise moment. It was a process that was kind of natural. I was one of these shy kids, very much nerdy, uh, working hard and speaking little and yeah. fascinated by mathematics and it was so natural to go into there. But politics, it was so brutal and unexpected and a very uh, sudden transition. You have to learn new codes, new ways for being interviewed, new difficulties, new complications, etc., etc and but learning new things also. But it's, a, it's an interesting way, because uh, sometimes politi uh, mathematicians, scientists can have opinions, but it's, uh, I think it's quite unusual for us to, to actually break through. Some astronauts have done that, gotten in, involved with, with politics, but it's, uh, it's an interesting way to contribute. You're no longer in the classroom, in the lab, or doing the research necessarily, but you're, it's you're out there setting policy. Some of my best friends warned me, said, don't do it. Yeah. In particular, because as long, they said, as long as you're an independent scientist, people will trust your advice. Mm -hmm. As soon as you are in a political movement, people will think that what you say is dictated more by the line of the party than by your scientist opinion. So you will lose your credibility. And still I did it. And I campaign over the theme that, you know, it will be very useful to have some politicians who really know the technique, the science, who can advise the government and the politicians directly from the inside yeah. about issues such as uh, tech development, uh, such as uh, education for science. And now, after one year in Parliament, I can say I was completely correct. I was, the government gave me some missions like prepare the uh, reform of the mathematical education in France, badly needed, like prepare the French strategy for artificial intelligence and uh, work in, with the European Union for the artificial uh, intelligence strategy at the European level. And being inside the politics gave me access to all the ministers, to my colleagues, I could directly speak to them and uh, be much more efficient in transmitting these skills. When the time for the mission uh, was over, when there was the ceremony for, uh, for, the, uh, for uh, giving the report and explaining it, we could organize a big conference mixing politicians and specialists of artificial intelligence worldwide. There was my speech, there was speech of President Macron, there was a speech of Commissioner Moedas, who is here today also as part of the, of the Web Summit, there was speech of the Ministry for Research in Germany, and uh, uh, I was doing this go-between, you know, between the scientists and the politicians. Yeah. Well, I think that's very valuable because a lot of what the future is about, and currently now, of course, and what's coming in the future, things that are important like science education, technology, artificial intelligence, there's always going to be that political uh, legislation guiding of it, and not, you know, I, I think the majority of politicians do not have that background. So I think it's great to be able to be involved, take your background and contribute in the way you have. I think, uh, thank you for doing that. You know, so I think on behalf of all of us here, who are techno technologically oriented, it's great to have someone who is participating at that level with, with your background is, 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 I think, a wonderful opportunity. I believe we need more of these careers nowadays 
because politicians nowadays have on their table some files that are highly technical, depend on complex scientific issues. It may be about the environment and the climate. It may be about new kinds of disease or uh, dangers associated with some, uh, uh, some parts of scientific development. It will be about artificial intelligence and robotics, etc., etc. And to help the decision, they need expert advice also from, uh, also from within. Yeah. Think of this, that only 10 years ago, or even six years ago maybe, governments thought of artificial intelligence as one of these abstract subjects. Yeah. Let's give them a few bucks so that they, are, they can work on whatever they, they, they fancy and uh, uh, they will be happy this way. <laughs> and now they're all thinking, how many billions can I secure from my budget to help the development of this? How many uh, scientists and experts in algorithmic can we train and we need to have more and more of them and we need to uh, favor the dialogue between the economy people and the tech people, the yeah. inform computer science people. So it's coming, it's, it's really coming into demand now and that brings us to the, to the, our topic, our, our title, which is, you know, nerds ruling the world. Uh, how did this, what do you think about that statement? What do you think about how cool it is now to be a, a science, a math oriented person? Because it is cool. Now, to no, be, how, did this, how did you see this happening? Where do you think it's going? Do you think that's true? Do you think that's what, what's think, going on now? I think, that's, I think that's definitely true. And I think there are still some of the old cliché, of course, mm -hmm. about nerds, about geeks, how they are out of place in society, etc. But it's becoming less and less of these. It's uh, bec reducing more and more the amount of people who think this way. And more and more people think of nerds and geeks as these people who are helping uh, thinking about the, about the future and how it is. You know, when I saw the title of our exchange, yeah. it reminded me of an essay written by a mathematician colleague of mine, American. Uh, he was a professor in Harvard. And 25 years ago, he wrote this essay called America Needs Its Nerds. And in those days, 25 years ago, it looked like a rather provocative, bold statement. Mm -hmm. But now we completely understand this. And we need more and more nerds involved in the world affairs yeah. at strategic positions in which they can advise and help and uh, make sure that things go in the right direction, also with the technology. At the same time, you don't want only the experts to be in charge. It would be a disaster. You want a combination of people who are experts and people who are not, but who are more interested in the way things go at large in the world about uh, human relations. Mm -hmm. It's in this contact that we have to build the decision spheres of tomorrow. Mm -hmm. So you're thinking there's lots of opportunity for tech for ner well, we're calling them people nerds, but I consider myself in that category too, I guess, but it's, it's technology-oriented people, you know, what we call the STEM fields, science, technology, engineering, and math. And that's, now it's, you know, we, I can even see it in my teaching at Columbia, it's become very popular uh, for students to want to be engineers and scientists, and uh, it, it, it's, it's something they see as, as interesting because you do some very exciting things with that background, and you can apply it over many over many areas. Uh, do, you, do you think there's something that, is, that has happened to cause that and, you, and it's going to continue over the next I few years? I think it's a deep trend indeed, as you say. Uh, more and more people who, are, uh, who see that there is this uh, interest. However, we have to uh, make sure that the, we are favoring, encouraging this, uh, this movement and this trend. We've seen over the past decades, the, in all developed societies, the number of students in sciences, in science, decrease and decrease. In America, it was compensated by the income from Asia, Asian mm -hmm. students in particular, but Native American students, if I may say, uh, are, are, were, were decreasing and decreasing. And here, this new rise of the high tech is an extraordinary opportunity to reverse 
the trend and to say, look, people, we need, society needs scientists more than ever now. People who are at ease in understanding what a computer program is, what are the technology challenges, and we need to make sure that there is a diversity of sciences which is favored also because the new trends like artificial intelligence trend is always in relation with other fields of science, be it mechanical engineering with the robotics or uh, biology with analysis of the, of the genomic uh, medicine uh, or physics, etc., etc. What, what advice do you have? There's a lot of young people here, right, who are entrepreneurs, a uh, lot of techno technology is involved in just about everything that is the Web Summit is about, right, at some level. What advice do you have for them, both as far as what you expect in the future for their uh, pursuits in technology, but also um, any personal thoughts you have, what you've learned, because you've been very successful in many different areas. It's extraordinary what you've been able to accomplish. What, what advice do you have for, for them and for, you know, for all of us here? Uh, first advice is to be very much open to the contact uh, uh, of people, but people who are attending this meeting already, in large part, are aware of this. Or be it in my career of mathematician or in my uh, political career, uh, all that I accomplished was made with teams, was made with uh, ideas coming from various people around me, and the possibility to change from one point of view to another. Uh, I think it's very important to allow a good place in your career that is left to randomness, like chance encounters. You know, my, my Fields Medal was obtained in part through running in front of uh, ideas because I encountered people and I was able to, uh, to change direction depending on these encounters or to recognize that I was undergoing some uh, very nice coincidence that I needed to exploit. Recognizing that you, ha you are having some moment of luck is one of the most important things that I saw, both in my research career, but also in the rest of my, uh, of my career. And then uh, I am sure that uh, the ability to not be, you know, trapped in a specialty, in an identity, is very important mm -hmm. also. And you, uh, I mean, even though you're a, a, the ultimate accomplishment in math, you've been able to move over to politics as well, and, and but it all builds on, e on each other. So and I like that. You're not stuck. Yes. You're not stuck, folks. You can always move exactly. around. Exactly, and use one for the other. Yeah. And I had to fight some uh, cliché, you know, yeah. about this. And the uh, legislative campaign, some of my adversaries, they would say things such as, oh, this guy is a mathematician, his uh, destiny is to stay a mathematician, he's not fit for politics. Yeah. With this idea that if you're good at something, then you should not go into yeah. something else. Yeah. Even, uh, even nowadays, now as I am uh, setting more and more ambitious political goals. Some adversary will say, now, wh wh what does this guy believe he is? After all, he's just a scientist and so on. And uh, every time somebody says this, it reinforces my determination to no, not let myself be right. inside the trap. Yeah, and I think that, I think that's really good advice. Sometimes you feel like if you're pursuing something and then you've discovered something else you want to do, it's never too late to switch but it's important to take those steps to try to make that switch. I like what you said about relationships are important. You never know who you're gonna meet. And I heard a friend of mine tell me he thought the secret to success was just showing up, just taking that opportunity, that chance, going to things, meeting Absolutely. people. Because you never know what's gonna happen. And if you don't take that, if you don't show up, if you don't go to things, if you don't try go and learn, things, you're meet, not gonna get anywhere. And then there is more possibility, of course, that yeah. the luck comes. Right. And then you have to you have to seize it. So it's yeah. uh, get the chance, get the luck, but there is preparation get for that. There. We have a few seconds left. What's next for you? What's uh, what's what's, oh. what's what, what's the next what's the next step? Do we big, know? Big big plans since I announced a couple of weeks ago in France that I was candidate for being uh, in in the name of my movement. 
candidate for the next election of the Paris mayor. Paris mayor. So that is an enormous challenge. That, is, that, would, that would be great. As you can imagine, I received some yeah. big attacks, which is a good sign. If people yeah. are not scared <laughs> of you, they don't attack you. They think you're credible. Well, thank you very much for everything you're doing. Good luck in the thank election. You very much. And thanks, thanks for again giving me a chance to talk to you. Quite a pleasure. Thank you for coming.